Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can see today it's the turn of the LI Series 2. Um, I'm just not happy with the 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 way that the clutch feels so um, what we're going to do today is we're going to open up the engine. I've got some GP um, uprated springs, um, got some new washers etc so what I'm going to be doing today is just take the engine off or side of the engine I should say uh, rear running board um, similar to the GP last video but um, we're not going into taking gearboxes out etc but it's a good opportunity just to check that the gearbox end plates um, tight in nicely I've not had a day's problem with this engine um, rebuilt it about two years ago now and uh, it's just I can't get along I don't know whether it's getting off the GP and um, you know the springs are so much weaker on a standard scooter it might be the fact that that's causing the problem I, I don't really know we won't need to disconnect any electrics etc um, what I'll probably do as well at some point I'm gonna uh, put some charge in the battery it's been stood uh, for a little while now um, I'm waiting for 2021 as I say to uh, get these scooters back out on the road um, so we'll, we'll we'll open it up and we'll have a look see how we're getting on um see what the engine looks like inside after two years um replace the uh the gearbox i was due for replacing anyway so new gasket on the side as i say i've got some um bolts etc all new um basically i can rebuild the clutch if i need to i'm just going to check that how much wear is still left on the um cork plates what the steel plates are, are like so what i'm going to do now is i'll take off the rear uh, footboard again um it's only three bolts so it's not worth um sort of boring people showing you that but um when i when i get that off i'll cut back in and uh, we'll take it from there right exhaust time so on a series two you've got one bolt under there there's none in the chassis in the engine sorry two there you've got a joint and one at the end so we're going to need a combination of 13 mils um 11 as far as i know and 10. so if i grab them uh 10 will do the little one first going to stick a light down there again so people can see what's going on pardon me it's had warmer today right. so we'll just start with one at the moment well they are 10 foot 11 but whatever so off on there we want the washer off on more shot and um, it's a 10 And again, I use the screwdriver to try and break the uh, the gun gum exhaust paste.
maybe I put too much in but it's it is rock solid that's rock solid so keep rotating it for a while what I'll probably do is I'll put this on pause because uh, this is a again could be 10 15 minutes before I get it to actually loosen up so I'll cut back in again <coughs> Right, that was a sod to get off, but it's come off. I will break it down into three parts again. I'm just getting rid of the gearbox oil. See what state this is in. Some, um, he's still got his colour, but uh, I'll give that a wipe in a minute and have a look what's there. Right, um, I need my spanner to get the clutch cable out, and when these, when the oils drop down a bit, I'll um, take the side cover off. little spring just unclip it from here gets it out of the way and put your spanner on there that cable just pops straight off fantastic you can take that off as well and then uh, I can start taking off the um, hinging casing nuts because this actual on a series 2 the leg that's normally still in place on a series 3 is out you've got a lot more um, area to work in a lot nicer so I'm just going to stick my 10 on there and just start loosening these off Sully the seagulls around today. Again, this is not a fast process, it's laborious and boring, but there's no other way to get into the engine. This is a standard clutch in here, a Series 2 standard clutch, so there's not a fantastic lot of technical um, items in this engine. It's all in a chenty. I'm just going to move the camera over a bit now. It's in my way again. 
Just bring it up a bit. That's it. And again, I've got a washer that's not moving. You can get um, pliers, etc., to just bring these off, but it's another tool in your way, as far as I'm concerned. Another two or three after this one, three, four actually. All these studs in here are original to the engine. This uh, is a 1961 Li 150. I might need to ratchet for the last one. Right, we've still got oil coming out of the gearbox, but it's going to come out anyway because there's more than uh, what you can see. Uh, just checking all the studs are off. Yes, they are. Yeah. There's a little tip for you as well. This is quite tight, so if you can let the clutch do the work for you. Just use the clutch arm in. Here she comes. Again, never use a screwdriver on these faces. Get away. Uh, a bit of a wipe. So the different or the main difference between a, a standard GP and a LI is the thimble that goes on the end and the the actual actuator. Um, they went to the what I can consider to be the, the PX stroke um, Vespa type in the GP which gives you a lot more um, contact area shims all right again what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off I need to go and get my clutch tool 
uh, which is in a different shed. I don't believe it's in here. And it's not at all used very often. So um, I've got a holder. I've got a tool for holding the springs in. Uh, I've got new washers and new bolts for there. I can reuse the bolts anyway and use a new washer. I've got a new tab washer, um, a new bolt for the Christmas tree. So I'm just going to go and get um, the clutch holding tool stroke pushing in tool and get the, the clutch plates out. They do look all right looking at them. So I'm just banking on the springs of at it. They just they're just not tactile enough in your hand when you're pulling away. Uh, they don't slip or anything. It's just it, it's just a feeling more than than a problem. I mean, probably being a bit too finicky, but you know they are toys, so we can spoil them if we want to. So I'll come back in about five minutes or so when I've got them tools. Cheers for now. I've just had a rummage in the. Uh, it's basically my tool shed. I keep all my old non-usable tools that I don't use. Look what I found. An Innocenti one. I cannot believe that. Um, that would have probably made my uh, GP 100%. All it is, where these splines are, the Indians seem to be one or two cogs out. Um, oh well. Right. I've got two sets of these. I've got that style and I've also got that style. Both do the same job. A holder or a set of holders. Um, I have also got um, the forks that go in there and hold the springs in place, but you don't really need that. You just need um, a set of um, a bit of grease basically. So I'm going to use this one because I normally use this one. I'll stick it on there. Stick the light back so we can see. Make sure it's nice and tight. Then all we've got to do then, just loosen that a tad. All we've got to do then is there's a circlip. Just undo the circlip and the uh, clutch just basically falls apart in your hand. So tighten up the nut. If it's in line. Yeah, that's doing it. Doesn't need turning a great deal. Just so that the, about two or three that'll do. Just so that the uh, circlip's movable. I'm just looking for where the join is. And so to all, I can't see it. Ah oh dear. There it is there. So I'll just unclick that. Slowly. That's it. And of course it would fall in the oil, but... And there's your clutch plates come out nice and loose so I'm just going to loosen off the tool which doesn't want to loosen off for some reason clutch plates uh, I'll show you what I do with the clutch plates I don't know if anybody else is still doing this it's a bit old school but it works Clean up. Right, I 
can already see that these LI springs are, are very, very uh, thin. Nothing wrong with them height wise. Um, if I go and get the other springs, you'll see what I mean. That's a new type of spring compared to the old one. Um, a little bit stronger, thicker. These ones being weaker, they're the L Li type. So, I mean, they're all the same height, and they're still springy. So, right, what I do with the clutch plates is, in between, you've normally got some material left in between uh, if you get a small file and clean them up what it does is it lets the oil in more um, I mean that clutch is not worn at all brilliant absolutely brilliant and they're straight no no marks on them yeah, they're fine I didn't realise I'd use silicon on that. I don't normally uh, use gasket um, sealer on the engine side, so I don't know why, but I did. I mean, this scooter had been stood for ages. Um, what I need to do now is just knock that tab washer back and put my clutch holding tool in and get that off. Tap washer back. Perfect. Uh, I think it's a 19 or a 17. No, are we? 19. Yep. Yeah. Twenty-two. How do you do? Right. What we can do again, because we're not using the engine stand, is just put a an Allen key in that hole there, and we're not then going to the studs. It's funny how some studs are further in than others, so. clean that up in a bit so uh, right clutch holding tool
this is the um, series one series two type they've got springs in them cushion drive um, they are very smooth scooters that seems very very tight it could be because it's stone bank old it's rotating fine I'll pull that apart in a second have a look um, what I'm just going to do now is go over and make sure these are nice and tight while we've got the engine apart it's just prudent to do so peace of mind and all that they don't look loose and again you can tighten these to what 14 maybe 15 pounds um, if you if you want to um, I just think that a lot of people um, talk them up and they strip the threads I think you better to do it by feel but that's my own see that's rock solid rock solid perfect perfect I'll say that's been built two years now that engine and that is rock solid um, I'm, I'm absolutely loving that so I'm going to clean all the gasket faces up and um, the side of the engine as well give them all a good wipe knife clean it all up um, I don't know why maybe I just thought it was an older case in it, uh, it the, the actual scooter itself um, had been half the engine had been taken apart um, by the previous owner um, they basically bought for a retired gentleman and um, what by his son and he never got round to restoring it um, it's a typical you know strip it down and get yourself in too deep they're not the world's hardest things to uh, restore um, to rebuild and the easy stuff have been taken off then when you get to specialist tools um, it was all left as is that's the original chain for the bike um, all the original parts are in their gearbox I put new bearings in uh, rebuilt the whole uh, shebang with new bearings it's got a racing crank um, it's a timony um, it's the chrome uh, conrod not the brass one so it's it's like the tuned up racing version standard stroke it's got a GP barrel on it and head and in this case um, it's got a 20 mil Delorto not a 19 the original uh, old style Delortos in my opinion um, they just they're just too much hassle getting bits for and um, they never seem to run right with them whereas uh, the later um, Delortos like you've got fitted to the series 3 they just they're easy to set up um, the only problem I had was that I've got series two cables and sorry yeah series two cables and they're shorter because the way that the um, carburetor is it comes in the side not the top so I had to change the uh, throttle for a uh, series three and I changed the, the uh, choke as well just to be on the safe side but all of these are all series two um, they haven't got the oil um oil is on on the front end i think that's a waste of time um depends how far you want to get into a restoration i suppose but um you know that's a, a new shock um just trying to think what else was new on it it's it's mainly i mean trunnions etc cables rewired all the electrics are all replaced uh solid state battery um it's got an indian um mag housing on it uh, the other one was so solid that it's just the usual case where you're never going to get that to come off and be reusable um, what I ended up doing was drilling it out simply because the fact it was absolutely 100% rock solid it, it'd probably been in there for 40 50 years um, and become one part not two but um, you know they're, they're not expensive to do and I've never had a problem with a uh, an Indian um, mag housing before so it, yes it's not a hundred percent in a chenty but um, 
you know the little things like I'm running GP bearings um, it, it is quite a smooth bike it's uh, and it goes okay um, the reason why I put the, the racing crank in was because if I couldn't take to the scooter being sta in its standard form i.e. too slow um, it gave me the option to just buy a kit and stick it on um, not that I really want to do that I'd probably um, having put a couple of them in now I'd probably go for um, the MB race tour all right what I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning up all the engine studs I took them out to be cleaned up again I'm just running the threads up cleaning them up um, they are going to have um, new excuse me they're going to have some new um, my, um, thread lock on them, sorry, get my brain in here. Uh, I've already done two, this is the seventh one, so I'm about halfway through them. What I do, because they've got thread lock on them already, and uh, they are quite dirty, I'm just running up. double nut method keep picking the 11 mil end on the 10 All right, so just tight and I'm sticking them in the M6 die and just running them up I'm doing both sides just to uh, make a nice job of it and what I'm also doing as well is I'm going across I've got a aluminium brush and I'm just getting rid of any dirt mud or um, old oil etc off of them so they look fairly new again <clears throat> I'll turn it round now. Decided to uh, chuck it down. Roll on the summary. Right. So tighten them up. And again, just sticking it in the die and running it up. Could do it by hand but quicker with the uh, ratchet surprising now the threads just with a bit of oil on them are not very clean you know the, the nuts roll up them but the, the they're not clean uh, it's definitely well well worth doing only if it's just for your peace of mind well, that's another one done that's been done on both ends now even though they look clean they still you know the nuts go up on them but they're still not clean when you put them in the uh, the die so like I say they are well worth doing for the sake of five minutes well about three minutes each one and it goes again I'm deliberately not lubricating them because I want them dry for when I put the thread lock on. That reminds me I need some more. Um, what I've also been doing as well is checking out the clutch bits and it looks like the uh, the corks themselves have been bashing on the uh, the outer bell and Let's just turn that round and do that end. So I'm going to order a, a new 
set of uh, clutch plates, the corks, the steels are fine. It's just the, the corks are, <coughs> they're a bit bashed on the outside edge. I don't know if you can see that, a bit worn. Probably be uh, good enough to use, but while I've got it apart, do it properly. They're not that dear. Especially if you're just replacing the, um, the corks on their own. About 20 quid for reasonable ones. Uh, if you go down the surflex uh, route, it'd be 50, 60, 70 I've seen them for. Um, mm -hmm. That's when it becomes a, an expensive hobby. But I've, I've seen a, a few sets that will do me, so I'm going to buy a couple of sets because I haven't got any spare ones at the moment. Um, I've also run out of gearbox oil, so I need to get a couple more of them. <coughs> That's another one. Got five more to do. This is why when you put them on, it's it's sort of better to stop and start see see what you think and let me know because uh, this sort of thing is very boring but most people skip it so <clears throat> it's just uh, an opportunity to put it on the video so again clean up the thread and then turn it around and clean up the other thread This looks like it's been a replacement one, so painted black. Or anodized black. Looks a hell of a lot nicer when you see it, the threads cleaned up on it. and say 10 minute job and we can stick them back in that's a job I can get out of the way today <clears throat> when I go back in in a bit I'm going to get the uh, clutch place ordered a uh, new clutch bell um, and that will obviously stop the video for a while so I get them parts but uh, these are the sort of things that you run into at home so that's why doing these videos and like I said before not having a an hydraulic ramp most people can't afford that um, I mean I can buy one if I want one but um, sounds big headed but um, I just find that if you're doing these videos if people haven't got that equipment then it's not it's not real world is it they're not leaning on the floor and everything's hunky-dory and all that sort of stuff so right that one's me tightening again and just take that out and also on the videos I've been sort of jumping out and jumping in with different bits um, see that one's quite dirty so i'll get the the brush on that and the difference just a little bit of uh, wire brush does and the new ratchet right spin it over and do the other end As I say, I'm doing a double nap method on the uh, on the uh, studs here. I've never found the need to buy a stud extractor, etc. Uh, this method works fine. Never had a problem with it, um, as long as you don't overdo the nuts and cause the nuts to spray, spray and they won't fit very well. I mean, that that thread on there is quite. Yeah, it, it is quite nasty that one. Looks a bit like it's been out in the rain. 
all it is is the uh, thread lock that's left on it. So there we go. I should turn out now. Of this, you can see. And again, we've got a nice clean thread all the way up. So, all I've got to do now is undo the nuts, and we've got three more to do. I'll pick the dirtiest one. thread lock all over it and it's also got gasket instant gasket all over it and you see it looks quite dirty at the moment you say the nuts go up and no problem at all I'm going to clean the nuts up as well um, might have a look see if I've got a whole new set right. I'll start on one again so it's in the thread and just <coughs> do it again. The clutch bell, it's, as you know, it's an old original um, one with a cush drive in it anyway, so I'll replace that with a, a Scooters India 46 tooth GP style. So I'm, I'm gradually upgrading. I have actually got 47, I haven't got 46, which is a uh, it's the usual isn't it, it's a pain, but we'll get there. I say they're not that dear as well, so I was looking to get another um, AF clutch, but uh, the only place I can see them from is Germany and they want like 400 quid. Um, a lot of money for a, a clutch that, you know, the bike comes out on, in a sunny day, so um, would have been nice if it was a reasonable price, but hey ho, I suppose they're in um, high demand or whatever and short supply now, so they are what they are. Um, it's just that uh, I'm not paying £400 for a clutch that I put in the GP for more than half of that when they first come out, so um, it's just when you, the time you top up. What, what I'm doing here, 50 for that, 25 for that. Um, you're not saving a great deal. We're keeping an old type clutching. Um, and as you could see with my GP one, um, it was not worn out at all, was it? It was just the spring wasn't set right, which um, I would check in future any of them clutches that I do. I'll, I'll make sure that they're all seated and level. I just assume that you know the right up I got at the time was they were all filed down and tested prior to being sent out and I suppose it's the old adage don't believe anybody sort it out yourself um, which I've had to do and obviously on uh, running it's a bit weird that it got the score mark and it's not been hitting anything um, yeah, not not touched any of the but what they do normally do they just touch on the um, kickstart shaft rub against that as they're going around and uh, but you you do normally hear a squeal I mean that's just it was only right on the beveled edge it wasn't on the high spot um, which is a bit weird but it didn't stop the clutch working so the clutch was working fine it was just very hard to pull in and now it's uh, it's it's manageable uh, can't wait to get out on it next year with, when we get some decent weather, springtime, and get rid of the snow and that. Where I live, it's uh, we always get bad weather, so hence the sunshine that we never see. But again, I'm just going to clean that one up again. That's great. And then do the other side, I've only got one more to do. <sighs> In most of them nuts that are there, they are original M6s. I do like to put stainless steel, as you know. Um, so I'll have a look, see how many stainless steel I've got. So we're down to our last one now. Double nut again. I 
I've got a few jobs to do on my PX next um, <coughs> Vespa um, I know for a fact that the uh, tubes come off the uh, it's a breather tube that come off the tank and my petrol although switched off is not off the carburetor is the only thing stopping it from flooding so uh, I've got a petrol tap there um, it was actually a new tank that was in that scooter there was a guy who used to break them over in uh, Stoke-on-Trent um, and I got, got one out of a virtually new scooter from him for like 20, 20 quid but um, it didn't have the air breather part to it so that will need changing so that I can turn the petrol off um, what I want to do as well is check the timing on it and uh, maybe just have a look, see how coked up it is, because that's been built for fun. Right, we've got our nuts. And I've got the thread lock. We've got our washers. And I just need to give that engine casing one more wipe. I cleaned all the gasket off of it. Just got a bit of the silicon everywhere but that won't do any damage to anything right so again double nut job with a nice new stainless studs I'm running too easy now on the threads uh, right. And again, blue's fine for this. Oh, we got red. I thought it was a blue one, but whatever. Just a dab on the side, and we're going to start and work our way around clockwise fashion. Boy, do they run up nice. When they're all clean. The battery had died on me, sorry about that. Um, but if we go quickly through here, I didn't realise that you weren't watching, but uh, let's get the LED on. I'll put all the studs in. All nice and even. What I'm going to do now is clean up the kickstart side. I've just noticed there's a bit of um, silicon on there. That's it. Out. So, like I say, I'm just going to clean up the engine side. Light on there. And then look through what I need to order for the clutch so uh, right we have a little bit of oil which we can uh, mop up you'd think after two years and um, a few miles that all the grease had disappeared but there's loads of it still there uh, I'm just going to grab that for a sec and uh, what's just dawned on me as well is I can show you where the kickstart needed to be on the GP but because of the um, the actual Indian lever not being in line 
that's what I was trying to achieve on the um, on the GP just literally on the ramp so as soon as you move that you see it starts to kick straight away um, it does make a hell of a lot of difference but, uh, there's no, if we can see there's uh, put the camera out right round there there's no damage to it it's not worn here um, not being repaired surface area is good nice and flat again a new gasket will be put on um, but it just goes to show on the GP I had it up here to get the adjustment and again if you look at that um, depending on what your, your time is it's five o'clock or seven o'clock if you look from the outside and that one's bang on um, I must have redone it when I reshimmed and um, rebuilt the engine a couple of years ago uh, I've done a few since then so I don't keep a history of what I do with the engines as well so right our magnetic drain needs a wipe again oh, there is absolutely no findings on this one so that's great news excellent news nothing at all again that's the original one to the bike or to the scooter you have to stop saying bikes they're not bikes motor scooter there you go so right, the magnets nice and clean no bits on it with a thread of wipe and that's exactly what I just want to do on the inside of the casing where the thread is there just give it a wipe I might end up putting an 8mm uh, <coughs> through the kickstart there because the it looks like it's uh, moved up. It's got 7mm in it and uh, it doesn't look very uh, solid there. I've got a bit of gasket there. Knife blades. Gasket bit off. This gasket set from this bike was out of a, a GP set. I never intended to build it as an LI um, top end, etc. I came across a, a guy over at Scampton and uh, his dad had uh, got out of scooting by all sounds of it and uh, some were selling bits off and uh, it was a Saturday afternoon that I saw it on this marketplace and uh, hey ho 80 quid later I've got a racing crank um, brand new piston barrel head carburetor it's not a bad day's work is it you know I'm sure you'll agree um, I just want to try and get that back in there. That's it. Blades back in there again. I might give that a bit more of a wipe. As I say, when I go in in about 10 minutes or so, I'll um, I'll get these parts ordered. Hopefully they can get them out today. And get them by Friday. What is it, Monday today? Can't see why not. I know it's Christmas and all that lark, but... fine so let's put my magnet back in I'm not tightening it yet but that's back in again and we're we're more or less ready to go with that I just want to wipe down the uh, 
with the levers and and say so I always fill up from here um, they say you're supposed to do it from there but it's just with the exhaust sometimes especially with a tune bite the exhaust gets in the way that's fine now that I can put that safe and what we're catching up with now is um, that's fine I'm going to run with that um, that's fine I'm going to run with that I'm going to order a new one of these um, the latest solid type if I do put kit on it it'll just cover me um, the metals are all fine I'm, what I'm going to do in a second is measure them and some of the um, corks although the corks themselves are fine um, they're a bit bashed on the ends. I mean, I could have filed them and used them again, but like I say, for the sake of 20 quid, it ain't worth the hassle. Um, and as I'm ordering the clutch bell anyway, I may as well get some clutch plates. And like I say, I, I normally carry stuff like that and I haven't got any in at the moment. So I'll order uh, two or three sets. I'll have a couple of spares then. Usable, definitely. Um, like I say, I just need the, the cork plates, which I could reuse again. Um, I noticed there's a little bit of damage inside here. Um, I don't know whether a clutch is let go before. Um, it looks shiny, it's, it's not old. So, it's not on every one, but I wonder if the clutch got stuck in the past. Um, Again, that wouldn't stop it working. You're looking for these edges which are straight. They're all straight. There's no um, burrs or digs in them. I mean, that, that is reusable. Um, it's just for 25 quid or whatever. Um, it's just an upgrade I can do. It'll probably make it a bit harsher to drive because it's taking away a cush drive, but... Um, I'm not I'm not going to change it for a 47 or anything and mess around with the gearings that did cross my mind last year to change the front sprocket um, but what what are you going to get out of a GP 150 not a lot really are you so like I say I'll buy a new one of them and I'll get that on order today and I'll get these corks ordered 3.14 3.14 I mean they've got tons of meat on them 3 3.14 3.13 3.13 3.13 3.13 3.13 3.15 but they are level that's one good thing I'd say I could fold them off but you'll, you'll get a clutch that's all loose so I don't want that and for the case of the purpose for doing videos um, we're not out to cut corners are we so in an ideal world we have all this stuff hanging around like I say it's, I generally got 200 stuff I don't sort of keep um, the small frame smaller engine kit it's just it's just my personal preference I don't normally have a, a series 2 it, it, it normally have a 200 engine or whatever so, but uh, I think that's about as far as we can go today on this. So I'll get these parts ordered and uh, catch me on the next one.